What's up everybody, it's Bryant the Flowhawk. I've got it covered up by a hat today, but it's still there, I promise. Today I'm gonna share something that I just learned that is hugely helpful when using Power Apps to customize a SharePoint form. And that is how to change the behavior when clicking the cancel button. The SharePoint cancel button that's at the top of every form you create in Power Apps for a SharePoint form. How do I change what happens when I click that cancel button? When I went looking in the Microsoft forums, the answer I saw was you cannot change the default navigation of when I hit that cancel button. I can edit a bunch of code in there. It can do a bunch of things, but at the end of the day, it will always navigate me back to this all items view. Let me show you what I'm talking about, and then I'll show you how I resolved this issue using something I just noticed today. So I'm here in my SharePoint site. I've got my SharePoint list. This is something I created from a template, a list template. So no customizations here. If I click new, it's going to pull out in this pane over here, my form. I did customize this with Power Apps, but I haven't changed anything, okay? So I just came here, clicked customize with Power Apps and then saved it. No changes whatsoever from my end. Now, this is the pane view here. And if I click cancel, you'll see it just hides that pane. If I, um, if I launch that pane to pop out again, I can have a more, full screen experience by clicking copy link and copying it. And then I paste this into the browser URL. This will give me the experience of having the new item view here in a more full screen. It still has the lit, the uh, site navigation on that far left, but the list itself, the form here is in a more full screen experience. It doesn't come in the context of the list. Now, I've said previously in another video, go check it out, that we can create a more embedded experience by adding the parameter ampersand env equals embedded at the end of this URL. And hitting enter will take us to a full page experience of this form. Now, if I was gonna do this, I would not use the phone layout of this form, I'd use the tablet layout. But here we are just out of the box using what was already there. Now here's, the scenario that you may want to use this for. I'm sending this URL out in an email to folks on my team, and I want them to come fill out this item. And I don't really care that they have access to the site or the list, but I don't want them to be navigating around, poking around in it unnecessarily. I want them to come land, fill this out, and then get back to the work that they need to do. So the problem that we'll run into here is that if I hit cancel on this, it's going to take me back to the all items view of my list. Not only will they be in the list context, but they're also in the site context. So now they've got all the navigation, they can come around, they can create new items from here, edit and grid view, all these things we don't want them to do. Not that we want to remove their permissions, that's a completely different thing entirely, right? But I don't want them poking around unnecessarily. I don't wanna drive them here to this experience. If they need to get to this experience and they navigate here on their own, totally fine. So. How do I change where they go when they hit the cancel view? In order to understand this, there are some things that we can change when it comes to that cancel button. Okay, and I'm gonna show you really quickly how to do that. When you're in your list view and you wanna customize the Power Apps form, there's a couple ways to do it. The easiest way might be to pop it open in this pane, um, click the, there's a little icon that'll appear here or click the three dots and click customize with Power Apps. That will launch the Power Apps Maker Portal. Um, I've already got it open, so it's gonna tell me that. It opens up my form here in Power Apps so that I can make some changes. And here's what I want to show you. I've got a completely other video on going through all the settings of the SharePoint integration. Okay, you have a few different properties you can change. The data source, on cancel, on edit, on new, on save, and on view. The one we're going to focus on for this video is the on cancel. This is what happens when I click the cancel button on my form. Currently, out of the box, it just has a reset form and that will just reset this form. If I were to click on the form and go to the on reset property, this is what happens when the form gets reset. All that's written here is false. And so if I were just to look at this on cancel and look at the on reset, I would not expect there to be any navigation away from this form because there's no navigational commands here. It's just to reset the form and then the reset form doesn't do anything. But out of the SharePoint integration, 
it's by default going to then navigate you away from this form back to the all items view. And so it's nowhere in here. How do I change that? And the answer from the Microsoft forums was you can't, sorry, you got to deal with it. But you'll notice when I came here and clicked new and I copied the link, if we take a look at this URL that gets copied, a couple things here that are so interesting. Okay, it's got the list form. It's got the page type equals eight. It's got the list ID. That's my GUID for the list. It's got a root folder. We're just looking at the parameters here in this URL. And there's one I saw today that was and source. Okay, that's pretty interesting. The source that it gives me in the URL is my all items view. And if we haven't included anything for that source, it will automatically send us back to this all items view. But we can construct our own URL and give it a custom source value. Let me show you what that means. Okay, let me come out of this form here and just hit escape. So this is the URL that I get when I come to this view. Okay, I could refresh this page. This is still my URL for this list view. If I change all items to new form, okay, let me copy that. That would take me to the experience of doing a new item. Again, with the site right there. And if I do, um, since I've haven't added any parameters yet. The first parameter has a question mark. So if I add a question mark here, then I can also add in the ENV equals embedded. Okay, that takes me from here to a more full screen experience. I can also add in here the ampersand source equals. Now, the URL that I give it here for source has to be encoded. That means no colons, no slashes, no spaces. Those all have to be replaced with the percent %3F, percent %3A, percent %2F. If you don't know what I'm talking about, search encoded URLs. In our case, we want to do HTTPS. And instead of colon slash slash, it's percent %3A would be the colon, percent %2F, percent %2F. That's the slash slash. Okay, and let's just try google.com. Now this is my URL and I'm going to send it here. You'll notice nothing looks different, but if I were to click cancel, it would take me to google.com. How crazy is that, right? This would take me to google.com as the, the default navigation for that. So that is how you change the behavior for that on cancel button. You can't do it from within the app itself. You have to do it from the parameters in the string. So now what would I do with this? Well, I have a page on my site that I send people to, and it describes our onboarding form and why to fill it out. If I were to edit this, this page, I have a button here for them to submit new requests. Okay, so if I come here and I put the label on here, submit new onboarding request. This is the URL that I would give them here, one that has the source parameter and one that has the um, the added environment embedded parameter too. If I want them to come back to this page, then I would add this page in. Again, I would encode, I've got to remove all the slashes with those percent two Fs. I'm going to do that really quickly, but I'm not going to make you watch me do it. So I'm going to paste it in here and then change that URL to have percent two Fs instead of all the slashes. Okay, now I've got that URL encoded here, percent two Fs instead of slashes. Also, you can go online and find websites that will take any URL and spit out the encoded version. I'm gonna publish this. And now what it's going to do is bring my users back to this page after they've submitted it. Now I know that I've still got my navigation here, so I could also use the uh, environment embedded for this URL that I send them back to, but let's just do this for now. They submit this new onboarding request. It launches them here into this page. And once they complete this, or if they hit cancel, ah, I'm not ready to do this. I just wanted to take a look at it. What's going to happen? Um, I, so I've got that query in the SharePoint code, um, but it's going to send me back to this page instead of the all items view. So that's how to do it. 
You got to do it through the URL parameters. Thanks for watching. Share this where it makes sense. And hopefully this helps you on your journey.